Hi, Nor. How are you? <laughs> I'm better now that I'm talking to you. I know. And we're seeing each other in um, a couple hours. I'm so excited. Yeah. I still don't really know what we're doing. I'm just literally going to be like texting you guys, where is everyone? And then I'm just going to find you. So so Kendrick. In whatever state you're in. <laughs> yeah. So Kendrick is visiting from um, Tennessee and he is just in the city for a night. So Kix, Donnie, Nor, and myself are meeting up with him at Boxers because Donnie introduced him to Boxers because they it's like a gay bar where they play sports. And so, um, well, one of the gay bars that play sports is also Gym Bar, which I actually want to take him to Gym Bar. Maybe we'll go there too. But um, where they play sports and also the all the bartenders are just in Boxers. And they That's hilarious. Drinks. It's kind of basically they're like, okay, so it's, Hooters, but like, no, no, it, it, it's exactly Hooters. But it's funny to it's funny how like fresh and exciting it is to Kendrick and then you too. You never been when it's been something I've been going to. It's like been around in the city for like twenty years. <laughs> it's like yeah, not new. it's just like yeah, it's just one of those like gay things that I was just like, mm, and I've never go. been phased by them being shirtless. Like, no, I, I don't think that it's the shirtless parts, but it's the same way I don't really care for Hooters. I'm like, you know, right. I'm here for the food. Right. Well, they don't. Well, the, they do serve food, but I, I don't eat the food. <laughs> really? No, don't eat the food at Boxers. Okay. How about like a snack? A loaded nacho? <laughs> yeah. They Well, the Chelsea one has like a pizza oven just like off, like off of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> that, like people are putting like Red Baron frozen pizzas, <laughs> so like Stop. that's pretty safe. But it's I'm just saying it's not like you, we're, we're going to dinner. I don't know if you're coming to dinner or not, but we're. Going to I am. I you think are. I'm okay. actually gonna. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna. By the time I get into the city, you guys are gonna be ready to go to dinner. Got so it. I feel like that's okay. probably when I'll meet you. Anyway. Well, then we're also going to. We're really having a gay tour. We're also going to. Yeah. El, we're going to Elmo f- for dinner, which I call the Gay Cheesecake Factory because. <laughs> You I've never get, been to Elmo. You can get a chicken piccata. You can get like a pot sticker. You can get a cheesecake. You can get a spinach artichoke dip. You can get it on. You can get meat and potatoes. And all the staff is is gay. And I the food's that. like all just okay, but it's just it's like kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's also Cheesecake Factory. Actually, no. Agreed. Let me correct that. Cheesecake Factory food is delicious. Why am I lying yes to myself? No. So, I say but, this every time. Well, so uh, I think there are. We can critique it. In places, okay. like some okay. some things are okay, but um, yeah. So that, that's what but they're staple today. dishes. You know what I mean? Like, See, uh, of course, I, some things are okay, but like, are you going to Cheesecake Factory and being like, oh, I'm gonna try something new out of this binder of food? Wait, okay, but uh, me, yes, sort of, because I don't have a good order there. Oh, no, you got their get pastas a good order. never do it for me. Mm-hmm. I'm always satisfied when I have their sandwiches. Like, I get like a, absolutely, I have like a chicken. Or like they have, yes. they have like a chicken and avocado sandwich that's to die uh-huh. for on Texas toast bread uh-huh. with French fries. That's good. And this is I'm not trying to be like health <laughs> conscious here. I do like some of their skinny luscious menu only because oh, great. it's small. <laughs> and yeah, th- just the the size sometimes of like the entrees is so scary. And I'm not someone who I don't count my calories or things like that. Like I'm not like that. But when you see, you're like, oh, I'll have the chicken entree, and then it says like 2,800 calories. It's just hard for me to like possess. I wish the they desire. would stop that. Yeah, I, I know I that was. I, I, know, I know that's the thing that we, I know that's the thing we embraced like maybe 15 years ago. But I think we're finally at the point of our lives where we're like, no, this is toxic. We don't need to do this. Let's take it off the menus because I don't want to see that. I don't need to see that. But like I. I, I love the Skinny Licious. You know why? There's this crispy chicken sandwich on the Skinny Licious menu. Oh, really? I've never had that one. It's so good, and I always get it with French fries because I I don't care because I love French fries. Right. And if it's available, I will get them. Um, and it's perfect. It's a perfect amount of food. Because oh, that, I, I, to do that I don't like time. the overwhelming amount of food they serve you at Cheesecake Factory. I am a child of immigrants and an immigrant myself, and I have a lot of, like, food scarcity trauma still so sure. i feel like really bad about wasting food mm-hmm. and having to take it home and then it's just fucking sitting in your I, fridge I and agree. you're gonna throw it out anyway it's too much the portions are cuckoo banuno so i love the skinny delicious menu yeah for the same reason well i think the cow cal- the the calories on there were they i think they legally had to put them on there 
because um, you had to like warn people what they're getting themselves into. There was some like legal thing because there's certain menus where you have to put it on there. Like there's like chain restaurants. There's like McDonald's. You have to put it on there. Things like that. But I'm like, it. I'm like, if you are so far down, like all all sides of that argument don't make any sense to me because if you're mm-hmm. so far down the slope of like, you know, like eating too much or like you know, having that type of relationship with food, that number doesn't ma- matter to you. No, <laughs> and if you're on the other side of it, like you're not going to the cheesecake factory. So like, I just kind of like, I'm like, why, why are we doing it? Like let everyone live their lives. The world is ending. <laughs> yeah. We're sliding into the ocean. Who gives a shit? Give me that 2,200 calorie. Airplanes are falling 6,000 feet out of the air. Have you heard about that? Honey, I had my own little airplane scare like a month ago. You did, ago, you so did. So I'm... <laughs> and it was on a Boeing as well. These Boeing of planes course. are trying to kill us. I don't know if you, everyone listening heard, but there was an there was a flight from London to Singapore that was 10 hours in, like literally like an hour from landing. And all of a sudden, uh, like the seatbelt sign was not on. And all of a sudden, the plane just starts to plummet to the ground. And they dropped 6,000 feet in a matter of like a minute. Did it crash? And a man died. No, they were able to get, they, they were, they were fine once they hit that, you know, 6,000 feet lower. They were, they were fine, but. <laughs> but people were out of their there seats. But people were out of their seats. So there was like blood all over the ceilings. People like slammed their heads. <laughs> and I'm so, sorry, I'm not someone who, I always have my seatbelt on. Same. It's like my nice little waist trainer that I like cinch up and I'm like, I'm locked in here. <laughs> Like former fat kids were like, ooh, this like, can be a little tighter this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, this happened, a similar thing happened to not this exact thing, but a similar thing happened to my cousin. She was like, we were fine. Everything was fine. And suddenly for like a good 10 seconds, we dropped and everything was up. And thank God the seatbelt signs were on because we all were lifted out of our seats. And I was like, I wouldn't, I would not have lifted because my, my, I cinched so hard. (laughs) (laughs) But like, no, that's um, frightening. No, it's terrifying. I mean, you know, I had two emergency landings in one day. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I feel like we all are due one of those because then it'll never happen again, you know, but you did have, it happened to you twice, I guess, in one day, but but (laughs) lightning doesn't strike three times. So like, I think you're, you're in the clear moving forward. Well, from your mouth to Boeing's ears, hopefully. Boeing said, we should, la, la, Honestly, la, la, we shouldn't talk too much about Boeing because they are known to put hits out on people. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you're not going to have a third time, bitch. <laughs> you see the Justice Department is like, you know, trying to press charges. And I was like, you trying to die, Justice Department? <laughs> yeah. Do you have a death wish? <laughs> Look at us laughing about this. Guys. <laughs> People, please eat eat the twenty two hundred calories that she's getting back to me. Please, people are falling six thousand feet out of the sky and slamming their skulls <laughs> on the top of that plastic little tube in the sky. Like, just eat, live your life, do whatever I makes you happy. We are we are greyhound buses in the air. Okay, that's what that is. I'm sorry, airplanes fucking suck. <laughs> they really do. Do you remember? I don't know if you remember this, but like back in the day, like when we were little, and I was, you know, in the eighties, like. We lived in the Middle East. So Watch your mouth. Home. I was born in 1990. Please. Oh, my God. <laughs> but we, like, we lived in the Middle East, so we traveled a lot. Yeah. We were on a plane, like, every three months because it's actually so easy to travel when you live on that part of the world because there's so many countries accessible. You don't have to cross two fucking oceans, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, like, we used to fly all the time. And going to the airport and getting on a plane was a fancy event. Uh, yeah, you I agree. You dressed up. You dressed nicely. Now I see people in jeans and like heels on the plane and I'm like, are you a fucking psychopath? What the hell is wrong with you? I have a real issue with, so like I'm known, I have, I do wear shorts on the plane sometimes, but I'll wear a sweatshirt or like yeah. I'll wear pants and like a, t- a sweatshirt or pants and a t-shirt. I, there's, I can't explain it to you. I can't see all four of your limbs. Like if I see, if you're in a t-shirt <laughs> no, 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 and no. shorts, no, no, you, no, no, no. what is, a, are you well? <laughs> tank top i've seen tank top and that frightens me and i'm yeah, talking men I, women he she they like we need to all kind of like like you're sitting in the 
I I struggle just having like a t-shirt on honestly on a plane because like there's just something about the seat. I'm like I don't want too much of my upper body all over this gross ass seat. No, I mean the whole thing is gross. Like I like, don't understand people who don't get out of a plane, get to their destination and immediately don't shower. Like I oh, not immediately. So, don't get me started some- on suitcases. Oh. Don't suitcase on the bed. Get me started. <laughs> suitcase on the bed? No. Even when you get, when you come back to your apartment, like I get in, the suitcase doesn't leave the foyer. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. Or if it does, I'll wipe I will literally wipe down the sides of it Absolutely. if I need to bring it into the bedroom so I like, can unpack. But I wouldn't put I still I- wouldn't put it on the bed. No, oh, not on the bed. And like we, so, you know, we have carpet upstairs and my, like the suitcase has all the clothes. I can't be lugging it upstairs and downstairs. So mm-hmm. I will bring it up into the hallway in upstairs, but I also schedule my cleaning person to come the next day because I think it's so disgusting that the suitcase that's been rolling around all over the God earth, knows where. Yeah. God, honestly, God knows what. Yeah, what's what's going on in the undercarriage of the plane? Do we even know? Well, I'm just talking about just the rolling down the air the airport. Like there's Ugh. shit on those floors. So Literal. Gross. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see your biscuits in the plane either. Shoot like oh, God. I, so here's I mean, the thing. No. I so I will say this. I don't like to have my shoes on for a prolonged period of time because I like to have my feet up on my seat. So I wear socks. You put your like, feet on your me? seat. Yeah, like I sit up with my like, knees up interesting. on my chest. Okay. I'm very short, so I I can do that. Okay. And I'm very flexible. <laughs> What's the Nini quote? Me. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> but like I, because I like to have like my, I don't like, I, I, it's a short person thing. I, have my, I don't like my feet on the ground. I cannot physically sit with my feet on the ground for too long. I like lose my mind. It's a weird, I don't know. Okay. I'm neurodivergent. Anyway, so... <laughs> But I, so I understand taking your shoes off on the plane and then like keeping them around your person, right? Yeah. But I would never do that if I was barefoot. Yeah. I, I, I'm still honestly a little kind of like if, if you're on like, your situation. That's gross, I gotta, I gotta end this call. But I agree. <laughs> I agree that like at least you're not barefoot. Yeah. But oh. yeah, it's, um, it's gross. It's so disgusting. It, lesson uh, just go to Cheesecake Factory, don't travel. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go anywhere. Just go to Cheesecake Factory. That's honestly the best thing in life is the Cheesecake Factory. At this point, that's the best thing America's got to offer us. What one thousand percent? They don't have really anything. <laughs> I don't know if we have anything else. And boxes. Um, yeah, I know that it's it's interesting. Like I, I'm going to your neck of the woods, sort of. Right? Uh, we're gonna you're, we're gonna have a gay old time. I'm very excited. I'm excited for you to eventually again come to New Jersey so I can take you to rails. I know, I know. We should just pick a weekend in the summer. Like I, yeah. I'm truly being a boring butthead this summer. Me too. So well, I'm not getting on a plane again. The, no, no, no. It's hashtag boring butthead <laughs> summer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm lying. I am. Yes. Going, I am going to Montreal for a week, so that's not boring. But oh, that's fun. Are you gonna um? Take a plane there and you drive it. I am taking a plane. That flight is only an hour and a half, though. So we don't go. I feel like we don't go high enough to fall 6,000 feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's not talk about short plane rides and how they've maybe <laughs> ended up maybe like 20 years well, ago. It's, it's really a big <laughs> plane. It's not a little plane. I honestly, my, so my fear of flying is not in the air. It's not the takeoff. It's the landing. I don't yes. like landing because I'm Me like, too. bitch, that, what, ha- if that wheel pops off, mama, we're dead. It's a pop off. We're all done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely agree. That is the worst part for me. I hate it. Landing. I hate it every time. Cause I also can't see the wheel. I almost wish the floor was translucent so i could see when we're getting to the because you're just looking out the window and you're like are we there yet no we're not gonna land no and then then you're like if you're next to the the wing you just see that janky disgusting wing just flat like those little pieces wiggling in the air the the gills or whatever those are of a plane it's awful (laughs) anyway let's go to rails let's Let's talk about new jersey real houses of new jersey okay let's talk about the content we watched on bravo this week Uh uh-huh um, they're at the shore. There's love a parties. shore. Love, love a shore moment for them. I love rehearsals of Jersey when they are at the shore because everybody's forced to be together, sort of. 
sort of. And it, I love seeing how pitiful Jen Aiden's house looks compared to everyone else. <laughs> okay, it's pitiful, but like it's a it's a brown house. What does that What does that mean? <laughs> it's it's brown. Like I think that's you mean the issue in color or in culture? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I love that in culture it's brown, but it is also a brown interior. Like, yeah, no, just, I know. Like, I hate it. I hate I'm it. I'm like Jen. Just like update it. But I also know what Jen's thinking. She's like, why the fuck am I going to update this? It's fine the way it is. No, it you looks know? like I just, yeah, I don't know. It's not like the, you know, I've been watching a lot of Selling OC lately. <laughs> and they do those like ranch style houses that like almost look like, they're, they're like, it's inspired by Italy. And it's like brown, like wood. And it, it doesn't even look like that though. Hers just look, the brown is so faded that it looks like. Just something f- out of like 1999. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 1997, that house was exquisite. Yeah, but like Tony Soprano. Tony Soprano's done cocaine in that house. Like that's the oh, vibe of that's it. That's a yeah. That's actually a Soprano Shore House. Like yeah. it's a perfect Soprano Shore House. It actually looks like Tony Soprano's kitchen in West Caldwell, New Jersey. Like yeah. that's what it looks like, right? Yeah. But um, but what I but honestly, here's the thing: the Aiden household, you're gonna be fed. You that are. That food important. looks so good. Uh, that like, I want like a. I love that breakfast spread with like dips. Like I want like the baba kanoush and like I, it all looks so good. Turkish breakfast is one of my favorite things in the absolute world. It is so good. The bread is fresh. There's like the spicy sausage, the eggs, the lebna, the dips. Oh, it's so good. Uh, yeah, I agree. And us, you know, white people don't do enough dips. It's honestly, well, I feel like casseroles are kind of dips, <laughs> are they not? Like, yeah. I feel like y'all took a dip and put meat and like and like a starch in it, and then that's like, ooh, it's a meal. Yeah, we're just kind of like, we're... well, we're we're inherently lazy, so we just put everything in one thing. Like, we're like, uh-huh. we'll just all put it in a pot, and then like that's uh-huh. it. No, we like a little like this and this and this. Like we like yeah, a little like bits agreed. and bobbles. And I, I that enjoy that together. as well, but I also can lean into my casserole side too. <laughs> there is something really satisfying about like just having one dish to clean. I get it. I understand. Oh, um, the one pan meals on New York Times is where, where I'm at. <laughs> um, I don't know if they're even being fed at the Gorga household because the kitchen is so white it's never been used. No, I mean, they all they eat is prosciutto and Ozempic there. <laughs> And they make each other espressos. Espressos. Espressos, prosciutto, and then you, the Ozempic shots are just like in in the bathroom. You can just like put yeah. one in. Ozempic yeah. is our like tenth housewife here. Ozempic, yeah. is our tenth, and Veneers is our eleventh because everyone yeah. looks unwell on this show. Yeah, like yeah. everyone besides Dolores and Melissa, honestly, look like they are in like are crypt keepers. I'm like, what are we doing here? And Dolores facially? is the one housewife who's actually been very openly pro Ozempic. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm on the drugs. No, she, and but her, it's all settled in a way that looks responsible with her. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Jen Fessler is she had a facelift too. transforming yeah, I know. <laughs> and Margaret I know. and even Margaret. Teresa. The veneers are a lot for me. The veneers are a lot for Teresa. Plus, she's like injecting up her face. It's like she and Louie got like matching veneers or something. Also, Melissa or Teresa's like, you know, you get married to somebody and you live with them for a while and then you start to turn into them. But she's like a little purple this season because of Louie because Louie's always purple. It makes me. Did you watch um, The Cult of Mother God? No, but I feel like you've mentioned this before. Yeah, they them. they drank um, colloidal silver and they turned blue. Um, yeah, and I wonder yeah. if that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, literally, yeah. she passed away, and then they wink. They weakened at Bernie's her around like different motels. I'm not kidding. They like kept her dead body with her like at <laughs> motels, and they show her, and she literally is like this like trident. This is she's this color. <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, what do you think when you see all of the fucking uh, Real House Husbands of New Jersey antics with the blow up dolls and all that stuff? Oh, I I, I like it. I like the blow up mm. doll. I think the blow up doll's fun. Why not? I think that's kind of fun. Am I am I sick? I'm a sicko. I don't know. I just think it's like we're on the shore. We're drinking like we're drinking white claws and doing shots. Like why not bring a blow up doll? It kind of fits the vibe. Who, who, yeah. 
Why are, why are we trying to be classier than we are? No, that's true. Actually, you know what? You make a good point. I was anti blow up doll until your just your um endorsement for blow up doll, and now mm-hmm. I agree. Now I'm pro pro, pro blow up doll because you're right. You're not classy. Like, no. <laughs> let's not act like we're above the blow up doll. Um, one of my favorite scenes this episode was when Frank Atania, love of our lives, mm-hmm. goes up to Dolores and Polly and is trying to tell her that they're he's gonna proposed to his girlfriend Brittany yeah but the way he sets it up he says I have to go away for a while and I was like (laughs) that that, that phrase only has one meaning in New Jersey (laughs) no it means one thing and one thing only in New Jersey are like are you going where Joe Judice went like what's happening and he's like no I'm gonna propose to this little baby um this is not this little baby (laughs) this little baby uh, you may not have heard this, but I am actually currently manifesting my brother Raheel to date Dolores. Okay, how? Bec- um, it, I don't Dolores know is taken, it's- but and but but like, come on. Come okay, on. okay. Um, I don't think Polly's really got a lot going on besides no. also a purple face. I know. What is it? They're also fucking purple. When Louis was, <laughs> when Louis was like talking about how ugly Joe Gorga was. I was like, I was like, hard agree, but you too, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> like, sorry, honey. you're fucking fugly. Like, you look like you're about to pop. <laughs> if I punch you with a little clothespin, you like explode with vodka <laughs> and red wine. I don't know what they're pumping. The women are getting pumped up with Ozempic. The men are getting pumped up with something. GH- it's honestly purple. probably GHB and like some really fucked up like weightlifting steroid shit. I'm not kidding. There's no way yeah. that they have that much bulk to them without like illegal enhancements. Yeah, because the only person who does not have the purple sheen is um, our boy, uh, Bill Aiden. (laughs) Well, Bill and also Danielle's husband as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's cute. He's very cute. Agreed. He's very, very cute. Um, Not cute is John Fuda. No, but I kind of love his descent into reality TV monster. (laughs) He's so him happy being to be on, on television. I know him being having an IMDb photo shoot. Those photos of him with the Dolce and Gabbana logo <laughs> on the glasses. <laughs> My I can't favorite explain thing in it. The world. I love it. And also, I don't understand. Teresa is just so base about her trying to be like, yeah, yeah, drug dealer. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I dealt. I like sold weed and went to jail for like two nights for it when I yeah. was eighteen. You went to prison, yeah. Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You're the reason why when Frank Catania says I'm going away for a while, we're not sure what that means. Right. So like, I think um, I also she's so fun. She's so transparent because she's like, no, I didn't mean like right now. I mean, like he used to be a drug dealer and like immediately editors are like, no, bitch, that's not what you fucking said. <laughs> I can't stand her. I'm sorry, tree huggers. I can't stand her. No, no, this is not a pro tree hugger platform and it's not a pro melissa gorga platform it's a no. pro mess yeah pro yes. uh, yeah pro mess pro mess that doesn't have to do with either of them though honestly. which is why i love this rachel fuda and jen fessler like little feud um i love watching <laughs> rachel fuda lose her mind and jen fessler being like um i'm doing my job here because i i want to be full-time so i i went and talked to your enemy and i think you should calm down and jen Fe- or rachel would be like you're my best friend i'm like you've known this bitch for one year what do you mean i know i know i see what jen's doing but i also think it's so fucking annoying i would be mm-hmm. so because if i was on one of these shows i'm like girl you're yeah. playing us for the show like can- and yeah. that's what they're all trying to say without saying it I know. And but it's also- I can't, I can't, I, I would be sim. I understand the argument for Jen to do that, but I'm like very team Rachel on this. Sure. It's also exactly what um, Margaret did when she came onto the show. She came in as Siggy Flicker's friend. Right. Um, and then oh, yeah. she it's immediately in- became best friends with Danielle. Yeah. And then she immediately became best friends with somebody else because she was like, who do I latch on to who's the most popular person on the show right now? Yeah. And then, you know, so it's like, I, I, you know, Margaret, you can't get mad for Jen Fessler doing the exact same thing that you do. That's that's fair. I, I'm really liking Rachel. I like her. Interesting. I don't I don't care for her as a person, but I like watching her on television. Yes, oh, I, I think that she is. 
She's trying hard to yeah. make television. You know she what is, I but Danielle that. popped last season right at the top, and Rachel was a little um, behind her in that front. But uh-huh. this season, Danielle is not working for me as well, and Rachel feels like she's down to like get involved. I don't know. I, I, I'm liking her. The only thing about her is her age troubles me because like we are the same age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Her nose job also troubles me. Well, sure. It's, it's tough to look at. It's tough. Um, I'm excited for the fact that there's not really full on teams. Like I like the fact that Joe Gorga called up Bill and was like, do you want to come over? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a blow up doll. You want to come over? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and you know, I'm like, I, I feel, I like the fact that like Danielle is going to switch teams and potentially Jen Aiden and Teresa are going to have a fight. Like I like that type of a mix up. That's, in Jersey, there everybody's so disloyal and has is so easily swayed that I I like the fact that there's a quick, you know, switcheroo. I appreciate that. Yeah, I agree. Although I don't, this season is has to be the end of Teresa this era. Teresa? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I, I, it's the I think end of this seeing, era. Yeah, I think we're seeing a new era because already this season the attention is not on Melissa and Teresa are not talking to each other. Um, it's all the other things that are going on, yeah. which I like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, did you watch the Summer House Martha's Vineyard finale? No, I'm behind. I'm two episodes <gasps> behind. Fuck. I okay. never even talk about that today. Um, it's okay. Listen, that show's great. It's, Ooh, it's a light, great show. It's, fun. it's light. It's fun. It's airy. It's chill. Um, I like the fact that no one leaves for 14 days. I like that they're all stuck together. I like that there's a cute little dog who's a menace on the show. Um, I my, just love it. My I, issue with I the show it. is I can't. My issue, it's both an issue and also a pro for the show, is that I find Summer to be so um, insufferable. <laughs> but she Absolutely makes the worst. good TV. And she, she talks in her ASMR voice all the time. And, t- and She's either like, talking in that or she is screaming. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, for what it's worth, I like Bria because Bria is very predictable. Oh, I like I like Bria too. She's like, like, and I, some of them can clock her her like Preston clocks her gig every time, and so yeah, he's just yeah, like, yeah. "Girl, go be mad. It's fine. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. I'm sure we'll be fine yeah. in an hour." So yeah, but yeah. like s- summer, just it gets to her. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, she's, you've fallen she's, right into the trap, babe. Well, Summer, that's why Summer and Alex g- found each other because they both are people who pretend to be chill and are not chill at all. Like, yeah. they're not, they're not um, anything of the sort. Um, all right. We'll just go over to Vanderpump Rules reunion part two. Um, my big takeaway from this was don't give me any more, Lala. No. La- no. And, you know, I, I see what she's trying. She's trying to have more break the fourth wall conversations and talking about okay. the show. I'm down for that if everyone's down for that. But not everyone's down for that. It's clear. Like Kate, like Katie and Schwartz don't seem, and Ariana don't all seem super comfortable with breaking that wall. Sandoval is down to break the fourth wall, it seems, a little bit if it behooves his storyline. And Sheena is just sitting there like, thankful that she has another television season under her belt like but Lala she's she's trying to talk about these things about the mechanics of the show that just don't really matter to me and I found it really tough to hear her say to Ariana like hey we never talked about this Charlie situation and Ariana was like we did yeah it just wasn't on the show and Lala was like Right, it wasn't on the show, so we need to talk about it. And Ariana's like, "But why? Like, that's not <laughs> yeah. that's not real." Yeah, and that's the like, thing that's with the Lala. That's of reality TV, right? Yeah, that's the thing that's frustrating with Lala, right? Because to some degree, she wants to say we have to be real because we have to have off camera conversations also on the television show, which is what she's saying to Katie. And Katie's like, "Yeah, I bitched to you off camera about this frustrating situation, and by the time we started filming." Everything was fine. So why do I have to bring it up again? Right. I understand because in Lala's mind, Katie bitched to her and Lala said, great, now I'm going to bring this up on camera and then we're going to have a big fight over it. Right. Right. And because she's thinking about plot at the same time, she is saying that people should be more real. Like 
Ariana should be talking to Sandoval on camera because she lives in the same house as him. And she's like, but I don't talk to him off camera. So why, like you want Katie to have off camera conversations on camera. You also believe that people should only be talking on camera. It does like, it doesn't, no, it's, it, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't it, make any sense. And Lala's annoying. I need her to shut up. Like you're not Andy. She kept talking the whole time. Like be quiet, please. Yeah, just, yeah, and her, I don't know. And the thing is, like, her points, like you are saying, like, her points really never line up. No, no. And, she, like, I, she, she, it's clear she still isn't Team Sandoval, but she's just Team Ariana filming with Sandoval so they have a show that she can collect a paycheck from to pay for her children's lives. That's like what it is. That's like where. No, that's totally it. And it's like, no, if you shouldn't have to rely on your other people to create a television show, you should be more interesting. And that's how we make the television. Well, and I think they all are seeing the end is near for this show. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't. I think there will be another season. The ratings are fucking insane. I, Bravo yeah. is is focused on money, yeah. like, and the show has to continue. Like, they can't cancel it. Absolutely. But I don't know what f- what format that's going to be in. Like, I could see them doing Vanderpump Rules like New Blood in two seasons, and like next season be the final season of this gaggle. Every time you and I talk about a reunion, we ask the question, which remains unanswered, which is, why is Lisa Vanderpump there? She's so annoying. I am so over her. I know. You hate her. Every time she irritated me while I was watching this, I was like, Tom's right. She fucking sucks. She does suck. She's not funny. <laughs> she is She's a misogynist. A raging misogynist. She's and- literally, like, giggling over the fact that, like, Sheena hid this uh, time that his shorts kind of like like assaulted, assaulted her, her. <laughs> yeah. and she's like ha 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 what, how was it was it great and like katie and ariana both are like this is fucked up like it's and I've, I've said this before the reason why lisa vanderpump still fucks with sheena but does not fuck with katie or ariana is because she likes a broken bird she likes a broken woman mm-hmm. and sheena's a deeply broken woman and uh who needs a lot of male validation and that's why she still loves sheena that's why sheena's sitting on that side of the stage anyway um what did you think about this joe and schwartz segment and tough more tough stuff joe i saw i think bravo and botox who post all the twitter roundups that are so everyone go follow bravo and botox i don't even like know so who the account is honestly like i've never corresponded with them but like i know she's great she's a fantastic fantastic creator okay because yeah. th- yeah. i cry laugh at the twitter roundups because they are <laughs> truly so They're perfect so fucking funny and yeah. um she posted one <laughs> tweet someone was like you kate everything katie said about joe ended up being true or something like that like that she is kind of like a meth got meth vibes <laughs> like the thing is like you know so what? She, kind of accurate like she is no, fucking, it's, she's a loser and she's weird she's weird so she shows up on the stage shorts is downplaying the entire relationship that he had with her she's in tears katie says I kind of felt really bad for Joe watching the show because you're not nice to her. Right. Right. And then Joe loses it. Cause she's like, Oh, she feels bad for me. She feels bad for me. Oh, I feel like I'm losing my mind. She feels bad for me. I'm like, yeah, because you look pathetic mama. Like you look really bad. You look really, Awful. really stupid. You look really stupid. And then, she loses her mind and she starts crying because she's like, I wasn't bullied by anybody except for Katie. It's like, Katie just said she felt bad for you because your, her ex-husband gave you the runaround. And instead of being, again, instead of being mad at Schwartz, you're mad at Katie. Right. Which, uh, look, Katie's not nice. No, but she's also, Katie's, mean. Also, by the way, on that topic of Katie not being nice, it was so funny to me that Lala was like, Lala was like, Katie wants to look good. And Ariana's like, Katie's literally never looked good. She's hated. She is universally hated on this show every single season. Do you think she gives a shit about not being team Ariana? Like, 
Please. No. She's not the one. No, she's not. She's not the one. Wait, I found uh, the, I found it. I don't, you can't read the text. But it's this, that hilarious video. And it says. Of somebody laughing. Joe has proven to be all the things that Katie said. So. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> like, yes. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, any other thoughts about the Vanderpump? Oh, you know who else can fuck off? Brock. Brock, please. Please. You love him. <laughs> No, I don't love <laughs> like him. You, he's your so, eyes got so starry eyed. He's just Brock. like, no, no, no. I'm not attracted to him at all. There's just something about Austro- people with an Australian accent that just sound like a like goofy motherfuckers that I just yes. like, love. He's like, yeah. oh, well, Shana didn't say that you did that. <laughs> Sheener. Sheener. He always calls her Sheener. And and then he's like, like Katie, they're like, why was Katie so angry? Why was Katie so mean? And he kind of just whispers to Tom Schwartz, like, yeah, it's because you fucking treated her like shit. You're in your <laughs> yeah, like you're an awful husband. <laughs> and then they just kind of cut to everyone, just like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I kind of like him, and I sh- I have to give a shout out to Danny Pellegrino. I don't know if you listen to his recap still ever or ever, but yeah. he was recapping the reunion and he referenced Brock <laughs> and he played, <laughs> he played six inch heels by Beyonce. Yes! <laughs> those, his... those... Okay. You know, Brock is not a tall man. Well, that's clear. He's got kitten heels <laughs> on all the time. <laughs> no, they're not kitten heels. Those are heel heels. They're not even kittens anymore. Did he literally is. Pa- he, show heels? He's like Patrick star walking in the, <laughs> yes! in the pump. Yes! <laughs> Patrick Starr in platform. Yo, pump. I saw the the after show and his <laughs> fuck me pumps. <laughs> yeah, I posted that with the you know the um one step at a time. I think it's a Jordan Spark song. <laughs> yes. da, 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 and it starts with click, 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 click. That's <laughs> that's what I think of every time I see Brock rolling with his heels. It's just so because funny. I'm picturing him in a speedo in heels walking around a pool. <laughs> No, it's so funny because, like, okay, Sheena, by the way, is like four eleven. She's tiny. <laughs> She's so she small. Is so small. So you're already with a teeny tiny little woman. Okay, Sheena puts on six inch heels. What are we getting that five four? Like that's it, right? Right. So how how tall is Brock? <laughs> Wait, have you have you met Shishu? Right. I met Shishu. But did you? Yeah. But was Brock there? No, Brock was not present. She was there with the twenty sevens. Her band. Well, of course. <laughs> are we a band? <laughs> Guys, are we a band? I love she. Also, Sheena being like, everyone on this couch has tried to make out with me. Like, Sheena, please be quiet. <laughs> Which is right, though. <laughs> no, but Sheena also is the kind of person, like, I know who Sheena is. Sheena's the kind of person that, like, if someone likes her post twice, she's like, oh, they're in love with me. And it's like, Sheena, mm. relax. Relax, Sheena. No, I... <laughs> I I loved when she was like, you know, and now I'm in a different place in my life where like if Dancing with the Stars called, like, I don't know that I could do it. And everyone was like, (laughs) okay, well, let's not pretend if they called, you wouldn't absolutely drop everything you're doing and do it. And she's like, okay, maybe you're right. But I'm just not like, (laughs) I'm not like in that headspace anymore. You know what I mean? Like I'm an emo rock band artist now. (laughs) She's Gwen Stefani. Yeah. She's like Olivia Rodrigo's grandma. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's accurate um did you see who is potentially going to be on dancing with the stars from the bravo verse <laughs> no i'm scared joe no <laughs> <laughs> imagine no Bro- you're- what if brock got on in his six inch heels <laughs> <laughs> i would love to see him do the pasa doble and this <laughs> <laughs> it, it's um it's um our girl uh Sutton Stark Strack. Sutton SpongeBob herself is going to be <laughs> well, dancing. She's a, she's a dancer. She's oh, a dancer. You're right, I forget about that. But she does have neuropathy, so I don't. <laughs> she's got a lot. <laughs> um, are you watching The Valley? Yeah, of course. Oh my god, it's my favorite <laughs> show I've ever seen. That's <laughs> fucking show on Bravo right now. <laughs> Do you think Britney has a drinking problem? <laughs> Okay, we have to redefine here what what a when someone says a drinking problem, what it means because it can mean let's, a lot of things. Yeah, let's two people who are not addiction or <laughs> substance abuse or mental health specialists redefine what it means to have. A no, but I just problem. I think society says that drinking problem means you're an alcoholic. 
Britney's body cannot <laughs> consume alcohol anymore. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because she has like ulcers and there's shit in her. There's shit in her stomach that needs to be like taken out. So she like, doesn't have a gallbladder. Right. So the woman has a problem when drinking happens. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And Jax is an, is mean, so he says things in a mean way. But I do understand what he's saying. Like you have to, like <laughs> she's like, well, Jax, I just hit two shots. I hit two shots at ten a.m. Wait, no. Here's what she says. She says I wasn't drinking at all today. I didn't drink at all. I only had two shots. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, bitch, two shots is a lot for someone who can't like. Like, who has, like, acid reflux? She, I mean, it's probably just, like, acid reflux and all this stuff in her stomach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. but And you can tell also, she's vomiting, too, because, like, her eyes are about to fall out of her skull. <laughs> like, yeah. there's so much pressure. because she She's, she like. She can't wear contacts because. <laughs> but also, the drinking problem also exists because if your body cannot handle alcohol, but you still feel like you have to have two shots because you're married to Jax. That's a, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a drinking problem. <laughs> that's an issue around drinking. <laughs> okay, I need your opinion on this, and I'm ashamed about what I'm going to say. What are your thoughts about Jesse Lolly? Would fuck. <laughs> <laughs> would marry. <Me> too. <laughs> and also would kill. He seems like a great dad. He seems like a great guy. I'm not kidding, guys. Like I won eight on him when he slammed his fist on the table in the episode three or whatever. I was like. Michelle, get away fast. Yeah. But now I'm like, Michelle, you have it good. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Apparently, Jesse Lally is also a small man. That's he's o- tiny. That's okay. Yeah. No, but I'm saying, like, he gives, because Danny, Daniel, he's he seems so itty-bitty that, like, next to him, I thought Jesse was taller. Like, because Jesse gives, like, tall man confidence. Oh, he doesn't to me. He gives me, oh, like, average height. Like, I feel like he's probably just a little taller than me. I feel like he's at least 5'11", but apparently he's not. He's oh, he's like 5'9". Like he's probably like my I height. He, I think he's, yeah, I think he's like 5'7". Five 5'7"? Seven. Five seven. I don't know how tall he is, but Danny apparently is he's a five, small man. Danny is he, a itty bitty piggy. Oh, you know, he's a little, <laughs> he's a little biscuit, that one. A little meatball. How tall um, is Jesse? Okay, here's the thing with Jesse Lolly, okay? He is so toxic. He is... Oh, yeah. Um, He's awful, but the fact that he was like, "Is there creme fraiche? I can make some omelets with scrambled eggs with creme fraiche." I was like, okay. No, guys, I can't. I can't help it. When he <laughs> talked about having a nice Bordeaux, I was like, unfortunately, like I would like to hang out. I know that's the problem. Also, have you seen his old modeling pictures? No, he's fucking hot. I think and, he's hot as like okay. a kind of dad bod. So he's um, you know who Bradley Whitford is, right? Yes. That's who he reminds me of. He reminds me of every asshole that Bradley Whitford has ever played in his life. He reminds me yeah, of... Yeah, it's like Entourage, essentially. Like, those just types like, of guys. Just if like, anyone yeah, can see this, I wish... Why does this not work? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, guys. Google it. Also, look him up. Like, there's a beach picture. Like, he's he's hot. Like, if he was on the OC or if he was on Laguna Beach or the Hills, we'd be like, oh, my God, he's so hot, right? Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, and the salt pepper hair kind of works for him, too. Like, he is terrible. He is an awful guy, and I understand why Michelle doesn't want to be with him. Um, well, Michelle's also, a demon, though. Oh no, Mich- is Michelle a demon? I don't know if she's a demon. I think that she's completely like emotionally checked out with this man. I think she wanted to have a divorce before the show filming, like filming started, and Jax and Brittany convinced them that like hold off on it so that we can have <laughs> this on the show because the show is going to be better. He's like, now just wait one second because I don't want to be the first one to get divorced. Okay. <laughs> Because she hates him. And I kind of like, it cracks me up that Jesse's like, yeah, I lost 22 seconds in bed. <laughs> this thing is great. You're like, check, check, <laughs> check. <laughs> no, I'm and Jesse said, Lally. And he said that he likes a renaissance woman. He likes a woman with curves and like love handles and like thick thighs. And I was like, Jesse. Jesse, please. You're like na- half naked on the couch watching the valley, and you're like, Jesse, it's me. No, Bra- it's so bra problematic. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs touching my knees because I breastfed two kids. That's I think that's what he's looking for. He wants like he wants like a milkmaid. <laughs> Here I am. 
<laughs> you should honestly go for Kristen. Honestly. No, she's she's I, not enough Kristen this episode. But no, I need more but... of her mommy milkers hanging hanging around everyone. <laughs> I can't I can't get over how brawless she's been on this entire season of television. And I want every woman to wear whatever they want whenever they want, so I support her, but it's it's been a journey seeing her f- eat gecko food without a bra on on the floor of her apartment in the valley. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are we doing? It's so so funny. She's oh she's she's had no growth since Vanderpump Rules, and I think that that's that just is how I like hilarious. it. That's just yeah, how yeah, I like yeah. it. No growth. Uh, um, Daniel and Nia. Do you think do you think that they're the real deal? Danny gives me some weird non-denominational uh-huh. evangelical church vibes from my days in that world in Texas. Mm-hmm. We're like, they're so nice. You're like, oh, that's a nice, that's just such a nice guy. And then when you spend more time around them, you're like, you have a lot of like head tilt moments where you're like, yes. wait, what did you just say? Like yeah. he, he says some deeply misogynistic shit. Like, I'm sorry. Him talking about how hard it is to be a dad, like how hard it's been to be a dad to three babies, which first of all, like yeah. that's wild sure. to do have that many back to back. But so I, I agree that that's hard, but he, he, and but then when he turns it and he's like, she doesn't even say like, thank you or like, doesn't give me any praise for all that I do. I'm like, this woman carried these children inside of her body. Yeah, he's like, like, I'm up every three hours putting babies on boobs. And I'm like, and whose boob is that? Right, the woman who created these children for you. Also, yeah, oh, oh, you're, you have a heart because you have to pick up the baby and hand it to somebody. Also, while, while oh. she's dealing with postpartum so seriously, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her body's changed. She's got two babies on her titties. And you're complaining because you have to wake up and do that. You have to wake up and hand her a baby. She has two humans suckling on her body. Yeah, okay? I, I just kind of, I lost a lot of, I you know, my first red flag with him actually, though, was like a, a while ago. I think it was like early or mid season when he was talking about, they were in their interview chair and they were talking about like financial stuff. And he was like, well, I make all the money. And he was like, well, no, like I make a good amount from doing like, stuff yeah. through Miss USA and with like social like social media influencer stuff because I was Miss USA and he's like yeah I guess but like that money doesn't really go anywhere like that isn't like yeah. I, I pay the bills like I pay for that's like just like vacation money like that and I was like don't downgrade the fact that she's working throughout being the mom of three three mm-hmm Mm-hmm. infants yeah. like shut the yeah. fuck up i don't know he gives me kind of weird vibes although i do kind of see them staying together despite the vibes being off yeah because she's hot and what do evangelical non-denominational churchy dudes religious dudes love they love their hot wives they do um janet can't you want to talk about demon this demon. You want to talk about i demon? liked her i feel embarrassed <laughs> i liked her in the beginning um, but she's a demon who I think is a necessity on the show. She, yeah, she's a Stassi she's for us, honestly. Like, well, she's, she doesn't have the main character energy that St- Stassi is funny. Like, despite her being an awful human and doing bad shit, yeah, sure, 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 she sure. is hilarious. Like when she calls out like Kristen <laughs> for being yeah. uh, a loser, it it's hilarious. Or when she smacks yeah. her upside the face, like it's hilarious. Janet doesn't have that star power necessarily. Yeah. Well, but... what cracked me up was when, again, two people who are like bad, right? Like Janet is pregnant. She's cooking for everyone. She goes outside and Jesse Lily is like, shh, 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 get out of here, woman. I was like, oh, this is so terrible. But in that situation, I was mad at Jason because I was like, if I was Jason, if, my, if somebody shushed me, if a man who is actually any man shushed me in front of my husband mm-hmm. and my husband doesn't backhand him like Stasi, then I would I would file for divorce on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean honestly I agree. No, yeah. I know. He, but then she kind of like and then her I don't know. She bothers me though. I just like don't Of course no she's Jesse she's was so terrible. mean to her, but I still was kind of just like, you wanna go fuck Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> with Jesse. 
<laughs> no, Janet just bothered me. The next day when she was like, I slept an Freaking hour out. because yeah. I saw that gay with the story. What's his name? Zach. Wig. Zach. Wig. <laughs> Wig. <laughs> I saw Wig's story saying they were at Big Bear and I couldn't fucking sleep. I'm like, what do you hate about this man so much? He's done nothing to you. Okay, so apparently the rumors on the internet are that he said to her that he wished at some point he said aloud that uh, trigger warning, terrible shit, forward ahead if you don't want to hear this, uh, that he hopes that she kills herself and that she miscarries. <laughs> it's not funny. It's just like these people are disasters. Of course, yeah. that is like an allegation going through this gaggle of trash people. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... But I guess my no, what I'm confused about is, like, that was never talked about on camera. That happened during the filming? That's why he wasn't invited? happened before filming. And, um, and so that's why she and Zach were already not friends when they started filming. And then she hears about Zach doing all this stuff. But it's like, but yeah, but that's fine. But you came in hot against Kristen and then just decided last minute to push Zach out, too. And you've not explained yourself. And now you're saying that you slept an hour because he tagged himself in a big in big bear okay lady there's cameras all over this house you're filming a television show you know my thing with her is like so much she acts like she's not the drama and so much drama happens around her that you have to be she's like unfortunately i think you're the problem no i know exactly and I when she was like we, we have a jar where you put 20 dollars in a jar <laughs> and now you take Kristen's name and then like cut to like five minutes later they're on a boat and she's like i gotta talk about Kristen." it's like well yeah. shut the fuck up bitch like, i can't <laughs> stand you stop <laughs> unfortunately i see myself a lot in janet so wait really um, what i don't see i don't see that no, because I'm a person who wants to think that I'm above talking shit and be like, I'm I'm done. You know, I'm I'm so over this. This is so stupid. And then the minute somebody even says like, Jesus, Cri- Kristen, were you gonna say Kristen? I have a thing to say about Kristen. This is the last thing I'm gonna say about Kristen, and then we're done. I don't I know, talk but about you, it. It's giving me agita. You're endearing about that. You're no, you're I'm adorable. Shit talking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm adorable. That's why Janet is mean spirited. She, yeah, she I'm not is. And yeah. those gays that the, the gay with the pink boots, I still can't stop laughing at Zach. <laughs> I love pink out. Crocs. I want pink Crocs to come back so pink Crocs <laughs> and wig can get into a fight because I know we need more of that. Wait, yeah. for a second, I thought you meant you wanted pink Crocs, like the style no. to come <laughs> no, no. back. <laughs> no, 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 no. When no. that scene of like Janet with Jared, what's his name? Jared Lips. Yeah. And then pink Croc. I was like, uh-huh. How much? It's just like you. Of course, you have these two gay henchmen, these two Weho <laughs> gay very... henchmen doing your dirty work. I'm like, it, get a fucking it, li- literally get a life. I beg of you to get a life. It's very Ursula and the Eels from they, it, that one thousand percent. That's exactly what they are. <laughs> okay, let's go to Summer House. Wait, the, and it, does that make yeah, Kristen oh yeah. Ariel? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to steal I mean, her voice. I think it makes Zach Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kristen is Ariel and Zach is Flounder. One thousand percent. Oh! Zach kind of looks like Flounder, to be honest with you. <laughs> that hair. Oh. <laughs> um. Yes, yeah, Summer House. Summer House. Oof. This is uh. This was supposed to be the finale episode. Um, it wasn't until cameras picked back up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's um. It's it's tough. Carl. <laughs> Carl. Uh, he this like behavior in the back half of this has it's like almost triggering to me and I don't know of what relationship it is but it feels like familiar to me the way mm-hmm. he um is so he he's so masterful at making like fights like m- gaslighting just in general like the way he just, he's like this isn't a fight this isn't a fight he just wants softness and tenderness Bitch, no, you are the least <laughs> soft and tender motherfucker. I can't stand him. No, but I'm him sorry. Anymore. What do you mean you want softness and tenderness with Lindsay? You chose Li- Lindsay Hubbard as a <laughs> part. You proposed to <laughs> Lindsay Hubbard and you said, thank God I have Lindsay because I have someone with softness and tenderness. Well, like both of them, right? Like Lindsay, you chose to be with Carl who has not held a job in the, the however many seasons we've been on the show. The dude has not had a job. He had a meltdown at the one job that he had 
It was so traumatic. He doesn't have a career, all those things. And now you want him to be available for breadwinning while you are at home with babies. Right. That you did not marry an entrepreneur. You did not marry a businessman or get engaged to. You chose to be in a relationship with a deadbeat. And Carl, you chose to be in a relationship with like anti-soft and tenderness. Right. So for you to be a month before your marriage and be like, you need to have a career and you need to be nice to me. And I'm like, I, Lindsay's right to say, I think that you want a different wife. No, he did. <laughs> I, I, she nailed it when she was like, you want a Stepford wife. Like, that's what you want. Yeah. You want someone who's and, and, just going to be like, you, like, baby you and be like, I'm so happy you have a new job. Let's celebrate. And also, she's like, if that is what you want, you need to be making a lot more money. Mm -hmm. I will be that for you, but then I can't be the one who works and plans everything and does everything. Like, you can't expect softness and tenderness out of me if you don't have a job. <laughs> no, he, it's, it's tough stuff. He really, I mean, the the issue is they just are a mismatch, but they wouldn't listen. They're both very stubborn and wouldn't yeah. listen to everyone around them. Tell them, y'all, like, don't. <laughs> like, yeah. don't do this. Like, everyone, like, Danielle, their mutual best friend was like, this is crazy, guys. Like, and instead yeah. of, instead of, like, thinking about that feedback, they just internalized it and like it's almost like they're fighting to be in the relationship to be like against all odds we did yes. it and it's like yeah. you should never have that mentality in a relationship they got tied up in the brand and the story mm -hmm. and they forgot who they actually are as people it's like yeah the brand and the story and the idea and the image of carl and Lindsay, best friends on and off summer house all this stuff sounds great but like that's not you got caught up in who you're <clears throat> who you are on television you forgot who you actually are in real life which is carl hasn't held a job in 10 years and Lindsay, you don't want to be with a deadbeat you want to be with somebody else you you are rich and successful and you also want somebody who is rich and successful absolutely so. like in car and carl need this is n not a read on Lindsay, but Carl needs to be with a sober person or someone who's just yeah. like a lifelong, not substance person. Like, yeah, it's just not Lindsay. I'm not saying Lindsay has issues with that. Like that's her own journey, but like she doesn't react well to him. Not drink, not being at her level. Like yeah. if she wants to get lit up, like she doesn't like, let it be okay that he's not. And so then she's tries a, she, to drag she, him into it. She and Kyle are the exact same person. Kyle yeah. wants to party and work really hard. He wants to party hard and work hard. That's all he wants to do. And Kyle, Kyle doesn't like that Amanda doesn't do that. And Lindsay doesn't like that Carl doesn't do it. And it's like, okay, but those are the people that you guys chose to be with. So the thing that like, I'm very on the back end of the season, totally like, beginning. I was like, cocaine, Carl, not great. Lindsay, this is not, I don't understand how you think that this man isn't going to leave you when you say shit like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But now, yes, we've said this. I feel like every time you post a Carl thing on your Instagram, I respond back saying dark sided because he's dark sided. Yeah. About his, him. His, his, um, I was talking to my friend, Amanda Hunt, and she said, it's like his face is being eaten from the inside. And I said, yeah, he's like, it's like the RFK, like brain parasite, mm -hmm. except like, it's like his teeth, are taking over most of his face and then his eyes are sinking back to make room for the teeth. Yeah, I know. He's like turning into like Beetlejuice head. Like he's like, <laughs> he's shriveling. <laughs> What's happening? He looks, I, he looks sick. Like I'm like, I think you are in a dark space. Like I'm like, you don't look like, cause if, when he stopped drinking, like he looked so much he better. Looked healthy. He looks mm -hmm. so healthy. He looks like hot. And I'm like, but now he's he's ventured back into like some scary territory. I hope he, I I want him to stop being on this show. He doesn't yeah. give us anything anymore. He's mm -hmm. giving us really frustrating passive aggressive fights with Lindsay. It needs to be it needs to be the end and he needs to focus on his sobriety and whatever he wants to do with his life and his family and do that. It's just not it's not working anymore. His new business is being a life coach. Is it really? Uh-huh. No, 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 no,
Bravo like Finsta account like signing up to be a, like have him as his life coach. And, no, like, it's like he falls it's basically. For it. Yeah, no, it's basically like uh, mentoring, mentoring and life coaching and sobriety and just like. Well, uh, being, there's a lot I have to say about that. I don't think that he should be, his new career shouldn't be being a sobriety like coach. Like to me, like you can make businesses out of that where they help people, but like, I don't think you should be asking people for money to like help them with their sobriety. Is that a hot take? No, I think that should, that's that's not that's, that's just, fine. Um, you should just help people, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. What did he? What is his new career details? Are building my own little consulting and media company called Radkey Boys. The idea was to honor my brother. Okay, lovely. Um, it's and carry on his legacy of wanting to help people, but also have a place for my professional passions uh, in business, public speaking film and wellness sounds okay we're off to a really great mlm start Uh uh-huh uh-huh my goal is also to offer help through my experiences and to be an inspiration uh, encouraging open dialogue about sobriety and mental health and to be an inspiration for personal growth and transformation honey these are just words that doesn't mean anything so anyway having that conversation with carl i i mean with kyle about the future his future at lover boy or whatever uh-huh he is such a fucking like went to school for business idiot though who just yeah. uses words you use in business meetings like well yeah that's kind of like the projection that i was thinking about circling back on you with in like the next quarter to like go over what i'm like you're just using words to sound like you like are having an efficient business conversation when in reality you are just trying to get someone to give you a couple thousand dollars a month no, and and that's also Lindsay's point. She's like, you're just saying words, but what do they mean? And he's like, why can't you just be happy for me? I know. He's like, I'm going to have some stake and like some equity in the in a space. And she's like, um, well, how much? And he's like, well, we didn't talk about that. She's like, okay. And and I think her point is you're having these cameras, on, these conversations on camera. Right. It basically becomes a, a point if you agree to something and it's on camera and it's filmed, Kyle can go back to you and say, you already agreed to this. You fucking idiot. Yeah. You're kind like of doing it in writing by filming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's like, no, no, no. So we're, we haven't drawn it out. We're going to figure it out. It's like, you fucking agreed to it though. Like, and that's her point. And she's like, I'm tired of doing this thing where we have a discussion and I ask you questions and you don't like the way that I'm asking you questions. So then we just tiptoe around each other. Let's like, let's be done with this. Right. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. The only thing I will say with Lindsay is like when Lindsay was broken up with, she said she was blindsided. And I think that was her trying to lean into her Ariana-ness. Like she wants to be like an Ariana and be like, I was totally blindsided by like this breakup. Babe, how are you blindsided? It was awful. Everything that you guys, your relationship appears to be terrible. Like I don't, I don't see. Yeah. That, that's where Lindsay loses me a little bit because she is, she is very like, because she's PR. She's very like thinking about, she's always thinking about image and like how things come across. Yeah. So I think she's trying to plan a good strategy of like how she can play the season where she looks good despite her fucking up. But it's like in reality, I wish you just a little more honest about the fact that you did some fucked up stuff. I mean, weaponizing his sobriety against him was a real low low. Like I would not recover from that. Yeah, totally. Um, What do you think about did you see that there's some some beef going on between Craig and Kyle? Kyle, like the most sensitive little man baby I've ever met in my life. Not not met, but seen. Yeah, but I actually kind of team Kyle on the the drama. Did you see his okay. him talking on Watch It Happens Live about it? So I only saw a little bit, which was essentially that Craig is promoting some new spirits line. And he was like the spokesperson. Ky- okay. And Kyle is upset because he's like, You're my friend. Why wouldn't you do it with me? But my thing is like, mm-hmm. No, I don't think that's totally it though. I don't think he's actually upset that he wouldn't do it for him. I think he's just like confused at why there was no my understanding of what he was saying was like so he said that he knows the the founders of this competitor but he was like they're not even really a competitor they're just like another like spritz canned spritz company like i guess they are a competitor but they're not like 
Like Loverboy does no very well. No, yeah, Lover, yeah. Loverboy is a very successful company, despite him trying to, for some reason, act like it's not on this season of the show for some reason. Yeah, but. I'm like, you can't say that it's like, that's my thing is like, you can't get mad at Craig for maybe supporting a different brand um, when you've been talking about how you're not making your money. It's not good. You're I know. I don't know. I agree. That was weird. <laughs> but he, but he was he was like, I had dinner with the founder uh-huh. and then the next day. And we were just talking, like, sharing business ideas. And the next day, it's posted that Craig is the spokesperson for it. So he was like, I was really confused about why the guy I had dinner with didn't tell me that oh. one of my good friends is now the spokesperson of this brand. So he's like, that was weird. And then yeah. also what was weird is they, they, I guess, took some... He's claiming, I think, that they took some intellectual kind of property from property, them. Property, yeah. Just like in from their marketing standpoint, and the, I think in general he's just like I don't care, but why? But like all the headlines make it seem like I'm upset, but I'm more upset that Craig just wouldn't be like, "Hey, I'm doing this" or whatever. Yeah, but also Kyle is such a baby. Like when he talks about, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just, uh, I'm just like you know, I'm just here with my no, no longer a mullet. Thank God. Thank but God. What I said. Thank God. Oh, that thank was, God. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. Jesse Solomon is cancer free. Danielle has a new app called Dawn. I hate it. It Can't, is. I mean, the I get. I, the I love exists. the idea. That that the exists. App exists. I know people who use apps like that. Yeah, there's other apps like this too. Yeah. Um, my thing is that if part of your service does not include sending a, a professional to come and take photos of all of the items in my closet. I'm not doing this because that's what you are supposed to do. You take pictures of every single item in your closet yeah. and then the algorithm creates outfits for you. Mm-hmm. Super cool. Right. Um, but, but the big part of that is like taking pictures of everything in my closet. <laughs> I'm not who doing that. To, who, who's who, do, who, what, what? No, no. What? Well, actually, no. so I actually, um, so my cousin, she'll never listen to this, Katie Ann, hi. But um, she has one of the apps where she's very OCD. And mm-hmm. so ov- obviously if you participate in an app like this, you have some form of like organizational yeah. obsession. Yeah, sure. Um, Because the app that she uses, every time she buys something, she logs it and the app, like you don't have to take a photo of the item you bought unless it's like, a vintage tea that like you can't find sure. online. You just say like J crew Oxford the, and then the size. So then it like pieces together your wardrobe. Like you have to manually, in, you manually enter in your wardrobe instead of yeah. like taking photos, which that takes less time. Yeah. But it still sure. takes time. Yeah. Uh-huh. I just, but it's like, I don't have enough clothes where that really finds itself important to me, but I do. And so you put together great like, outfits though. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love, I love shopping in my closet. It's one of my favorite things to do. I totally understand like from a sustainability side of things, that's is a really good thing because people then tend to wear all their clothes. If there's somebody literally telling them like, this is an outfit that would look good on you. Mm-hmm. But, and, and essentially what it is, is it's using AI to be a stylist for you. Right. Yeah. Um, but, um, the thing with Danielle is that I just don't like her. <laughs> I can't stand her. So- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've been, I've been very anti-women today. Okay. I need to list some women I like on you Bravo. You want to fuck Jesse Lolly? <laughs> oh, I need to list some women I like on Bravo. I really like Paige. Oh, you don't. Paige is killing it. Oh, Paige I, is oh, killing it. I love Paige. I love Kristen. Okay. Like I want to make that clear. Like I've been a Kristen lover forever. Who else do yeah. I love? I really enjoy Sheena. Um, uh-huh. I really enjoy Sierra. You I, love Ali Bally. I love Ali Bally. <laughs> I who else do I love? I really I talked positively Dolores. about Jen Fuda. I love Dolores. <laughs> I just want to make it clear. I'm not. I'm not. I just found myself being very like. Oh, no, you're good. Bitch. You're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, for all that, I cannot stand Janet or Danielle. Okay, I'm just gonna... And that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, and Michelle is uh, evil. 
(laughs) (laughs) No, Danielle, but also the name Dawn. I'm like, it for me makes, sounds like something kind of like mob adjacent. Like a Dawn, like a, like it feels like a title that you have as like a boss, you know, not like a, I'm going to Dawn my best anthropology dress. (laughs) Like, does it, like those things don't really go together yeah. to me do you know what i'm saying yeah i also keep wanting to call it done well sure when you see d-o-n-e <laughs> you you're kind of immediately going to the word that a very common word of the english language yeah. done oh done. there's there's two ends that's why it's <laughs> i know i know but it's I not know. dawn it's dawn <laughs> yeah but in new york new york and new jersey it is dawn dawn well <laughs> shout out to dawn i have one of my good friends her name is dawn and she's from new jersey yeah, and even in New Jersey, if you're a Dawn, you're a Dawn. If you're a Dawn, you're a Dawn. <laughs> We're gonna go see one of our Dawns later today. And they better be Dawn they better be Dawning something good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what the app should be called. It should be called Donnie. Donnie. That- <laughs> it also kinda looks like Donnie. You're right. Yeah, it yeah. smells like Donnie. Um Jesse Solomon, uh, what are your thoughts on him? Um deeply attracted to him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Did you like his little song? So cute. I I really, at first I was like sus on him because he was a little like douchebag douchebaggery, yeah. but um, you know I kind of like it. Yeah. Do you um support the rumors of uh or the the shipping that the internet is doing of Jesse Solomon and Amanda Batula? I hate that term shipping. Together. I never understand it. I understand yeah. it, but I just think I never understand how you used it. You used it eloquently. I just don't know that I, I feel uncomfortable being like, I ship that. Like, it's just like, what? (laughs) It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. It's like my kids saying skibbity toilet. I don't know what these words mean. One more time. (laughs) Skibbity. Skibbity toilet. (laughs) No, is this something they do in the toilet? What is it? (laughs) It's if you put skibbity on something, it means it's funny. What is skibbity? What is skibbity? I don't know. It's just a term the kids use. Oh, like this is a term a lot of <laughs> Do you know people about know. mewing? Do you know about mewing? As in the Pokemon Mew? <laughs> oh, <laughs> mewing is when you show off your jawline and the kids mew like this. You take your finger and you run it down your, your nose and then you. Are your it. sons doing that? <laughs> no, my son's not. Um, no. But he his friends are. You go like that and then you. Yeah. And then you go. Mm, yeah. It's very um and star, like, star is born Lady Gaga. And she's like <laughs> look at you one more time. <laughs> let, me, let me look at you one more time. I just wanted to get another look at you. Just want um, to get another look at you. <laughs> he would say Dawn. I'm <laughs> gonna dawn another cowboy. <laughs> uh, fun fact about me, I don't care for that movie. Wait, really? Why? Oh my god, it's so I, good. I, I love I it. I watched it and I said, okay. Are you are you you're not a Stephanie head? <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a gaga girly. <laughs> well today's a big love, day for the for for the monsters. We have a movie it? we have a video uh, like a f- film version of her last tour coming out today. Oh, okay, cool. No, I like I like Lady Gaga. Um beautiful gowns. Uh she's great. I, 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 love I like her. the beat. I like the beat. No, I love Lady Gaga. I love everything she does. But I'm just not like, I didn't watch that movie and go, this is the, the most amazing movie I've ever seen. Like, I was like, okay, this is, it's a good oh, movie. I really, I really enjoy that movie. But, you know, we all have our opinions. Yeah, I hate exactly. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesse think- Solomon. Yeah, I was also, so yes, Jesse Solomon and Amanda Botula. Oh, yeah. I, I don't ship them. Actually, well, I don't know. Maybe I do. They do. They would be a hot couple. I honestly think Kyle doesn't care. He's just like, I think it's fun that you guys are having, like, I don't think Kyle cares that he flirts with her. So work. I think Kyle loves having a hot wife that somebody else would 1000%. Mm-hmm. Did you see him post the other day that he said he loves Amanda's cans? Yeah, <laughs> I did. he's really killing I'm sorry. It. It's so funny. That made me... At- LOL. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funniest thing that Jesse ever did was when he was FaceTiming that girl was like, show me your tits. And then like it cut to him, just passed out. The phone is still on in bed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He like, wh- he like probably jacked off and just passed out. Yeah. Nice bro. <laughs> Wait. Um, 
our our Don, uh-huh. Donnie, Don Don Donnie, um, uh-huh. met Jesse yesterday. Oh, he did. But he he took a selfie with him because he was at Andy. Co- somehow, somehow Donnie is that name name an event for a reality television show, and he's there and knows no one there because he doesn't watch okay. reality TV. But yeah. he always is at these things. He was at Andy's like Fresca party yesterday. Andy had a Fresca party. Yeah, I'm like, bitch, text <laughs> me. I would go. Yeah, why couldn't you go to Fresca party? Did I he don't have a plus know. one? What? Did no, he have he, plus one? No, I think he was the plus one in his defense. Oh, but, I see, I see. I but see. he got a selfie with Jesse and he texted me and was like, who is this? Oh, he just got a selfie with him because everyone was getting selfies with him. And he was like, I don't know who this is. I'm like, oh, God. That's Jesse. I don't um, know. I, I, Jesse and Wes love them both. They really give me do. a Ren and Stimpy energy, and I love it. Big Ren and Stimpy Animaniacs. Like, they're up to some stuff. I love it. They're just, they're so cute together. Um, that This is where I want Summer House to go. Mm-hmm. It's the it's how refreshing. Until Hannah became annoying, it was how refreshing I found Paige and Hannah. It's very similar. Absolutely. We haven't, this hasn't happened since Paige and Hannah, and so I really enjoy this. Um, West and Sierra, do you think that they're still together? Uh huh. I think they are. Really? I do. I, I, I do think they are. You don't think so? I don't think so. I think they're like a perfect match, to be honest with you. I think that this man came onto this television show and was like, oh my God, this really hot, just unbelievably gorgeous model is into me. And in his logical brain, he thinks, this is fucking incredible. She's amazing. We get along so well. I should be with her. But his brain that is like, I'm about to be so famous. And I'm going to get so much ass like that. I don't think that I want to settle down with this woman because um, I just want to fuck other women because um, I'm going to get access to that. And so I think that that's really the thing that's holding him back. And if that's the thing that's holding you back, you're not for Sierra. Yeah, but he also. No, you're maybe not. But he also deserves to get ass, too. So I know 100 percent. Listen, I'm not saying that he shouldn't be able to have sex with whoever he wants but then don't be with sierra you know what i mean yeah yeah totally yeah but i'm sure that totally understands sierra not wanting to sleep with him Mm -hmm. especially while the tv show is filming i wouldn't be surprised if like the finale party aired and she was like all right cameras are off the mics are off let's go you know yeah yeah well that's a valid reason to not want to sleep with someone because there's a camera sitting in the room so i i understand that argument um wait i have a i have some intel that i need to share before next week's episode of summer house. And that is that one of my good friends from school, Aaron, she's been on the pod before she was in Montauk this weekend that we're seeing right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think this party was on a Saturday and then, um, I think on Sunday they wrapped filming like that morning and then they all stayed in the Hamptons and went out to Montauk. Uh Uh-huh. Because my friend Aaron was at a bar in Montauk and literally was with the whole cast. Like everyone was there. Uh Uh-huh. And was with Carl and Lindsay and they were acting. She said that she thought they were acting seemingly pretty normal. Uh Uh-huh. And then the next, like two days later was when the news broke that he had like picked up cameras to go break up with her. Uh Uh-huh. So... That's the intel. But he, she was, like, with them, like, up until, like, she was there, like, right before all that went down. And I'm just curious to see how it, like, all kind of plays out on the show. Because at this point, we're only days away from him ending it, right? Yeah, yeah, we're days away. I yeah. didn't realize that it was that quick. I didn't realize that it was, no, th- like, I thought that this, like, I, I don't know why in my brain it was like, oh, they fil- finished filming. They were supposed to get married in November in, like, October or something. He, like, broke up with her. You know what I mean? No, no, I, I think it it's, so like, soon. right. No, I think it's, I'm pretty sure we're days away from the, it ending. That's my understanding. I love it. I can't I, wait. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I believe in love, but not like this. Well, that's not love. They don't love each other. They just also, they love to be each honest, other as friends. But also, p- to be honest, people say this all the time. Like, oh, I believe in love. So that's why I think they should work out. No, I believe in divorce. I believe in people being happy on their own and single and living their best life. So I also am not a big proponent of I don't always think the friend to relationship thing is a good idea. No, it's not. Like, I under- I think it's that idea is based out of 
just people dating people with bad taste, dating bad people. <laughs> and I, as me, as a person with bad taste, I'm dating people. Like you were like, I just want to date someone that's my friend. It's like, no, you should stop dating. Like don't date assholes who like aren't, don't aren't nice to you or don't make yeah. you laugh or who aren't mm-hmm. funny. But like moving friendship to relationship means that you then, the scariest part about a relationship is that you are entering a sort of sentence of like, we yeah. will no longer be anything but this. Yeah. Because like if this ends, like we are not like friends. Uh huh. So why would you take a friend and bring them into that territory? You know, it just well, doesn't make somebody sense. Somebody who to is me. married to their friend. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I know that you guys are babies, but we were babies. No, but also like that thing that you're saying, right. Of like entering into that territory is why it took us like eight years to even admit that we liked each other. Cause we were like, I, I love this person so much. I'm terrified of losing them as a person that is so valuable in my Mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Just because I kind of want to jump his bones. Like I, you know what I mean? And so that's why it took us so long to get to where we did, but it does not always work out because it just it like and also I think like with Lindsay and Carl like they both because like you mentioned earlier she's into PR and they're both into the image of things and all that stuff. Kyle Carl is all about his image and all that shit. I think that they just got caught up in the brand. Speaking of brands, that little uh, goldfish campaign. <laughs> I can't stand that. Although I want some Old Bay goldfish. Old Bay goldfish sounds lovely. Um. Why Guys, Summer House have... pr- being promoting Why it? Why Carl? But they're all promoting it too. Kyle and Amanda did one too. I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. see how those two kind of like, like Old Bay Old season Bay? is from like Maryland. Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the part that I don't understand. Well, Carl is from Maryland. I believe. Okay. So that so is that's, tea. That's but connection. like, why didn't you get Giselle? Did you say that is this? tea? No, but that's like a teeny tiny little like connection. <laughs> oh, I that's thought you said tea. that's tea. I'm like, that's tea. No, <laughs> I don't think that's how we I use don't know that. Nor <laughs> you're like you did great with ship. <laughs> <laughs> you got your one like uh, your your one I don't know hip word for the day. That's tea, Mama. I I ship that tea. <laughs> what is the thing? S- s- boots boots Boot? the house down. <laughs> boots well sometimes people will be like eat boots like if they agree <laughs> I, don't I have a friend that says tea and i love her and i just I'm sometimes like but she makes it work when she says it i can't say okay. tea no if i said tea if brian said <laughs> i want ice cream tonight and i said tea he would be like what please Free leave tea ice cream <laughs> please leave <laughs> He would, he would show you the door. Wait. Okay. Last thing. And then I do have to go. Um, you know me too. <laughs> did you see the video from Wheel of Fortune yesterday? <laughs> yes. You sent it to me. Oh, I did send it to you. If you got this far into this hour and a half long episode, <laughs> this is your treat. Go search Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune fail on May. What, what it was yesterday? I don't know. May, 20, <laughs> May 23rd. This man. <laughs> it's a four letter word <laughs> it's a, a two letter word a three letter word and then another four letter word so first of all he's already his answer that he comes up with is already like not doesn't make sense because he thinks the first word is the word right which right has five letters so that's our first kind of misstep he's already off to a bad start but he p- presses his little buzzer and I'm sorry those Wheel of Fortune buzzers are so funny to me it's like you look like such a nerd to be like, <laughs> and he, he clicks it. And he goes, um, "That's gonna be uh, right in the butt." <laughs> and Trumper MAGA twenty twenty four Pat Sajak is like, <laughs> right in the butt. And everyone's uh, like no. trying not to laugh. He goes, uh, no. Um, <laughs> and then it was like best, it was like best in the game or best in the place. Yeah. or I don't Yeah, know, it was like something that. like that. It was like rest of the best or something like that. The and way it, he said it though, he's like, right in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Right in the butt. That's going to be the name of this episode. What, 
What a fucking wild thing to say. Like, what a <laughs> phrase. Like, like when you're having sex, you're not just like, where would you like to put that? And you're like, right in the butt. <laughs> literally not a phrase that it's i've ever not, heard anybody you know, say as someone who's participated in that version of <laughs> sexual intercourse i've never said that no there's as as a person who's you know like has kids who've been vaccinated in the butt it's not a thing that anybody sure that too yeah my yeah, mind right yeah. in the butt auto went to like penetration no, but me you're too. Right. of course of course yeah <laughs> nobody's thinking about vaccines everybody's thinking about anal sex I need right. like I need gay Twitter <laughs> to take right in the butt and piece it together with other things like where like Wait, what in the where butt? was the so- dick where did you where was the dick and right in the butt or like just like right put it butt. next to other things yeah do you remember that song what what in the butt yeah want to do in my butt in my butt yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> what what in the butt so I want you to I want somebody to put those together yeah that's Is not gonna T be kyle? me it's too much it's <laughs> probably t kyle i'm sure t kyle's working on a remix as we speak right in the butt <laughs> right in the butt this is so stupid i love wheel of fortune fails <laughs> uh, anyway this is a delight True I gotta delight. go wash my hair so I can hang out with you later. Yeah, I need to wash my body so I can hang out with you later. Um, so you can put it right in the butt. Um, <laughs> and I gotta. I also gotta edit this episode because it needs to go up in like a couple hours. So yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys, um, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening, guys. And also, <laughs> if you are a listener of the reality is not listening to this, um, we just relaunched the dumpster dive Patreon. If you want to hear some more content or see more content, uh, we have three episodes a week coming over on the patreon so check that out that's very impressive you know as we plan it it's not so if it's planned well it's fine it's when you're frantically like i don't have this i don't have that then you're like (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, that's when it gets but we're only two weeks in thank you so yeah (laughs) i'm like it's fine (laughs) (laughs) but if you but if you were listening or watching on the patreon thank you for for being there. yeah yeah um and then i have i've got just this episode (laughs) i got nothing else (laughs)